That's where greed gets you. Balrog said, I told you to leave my ass alone. I told the really smart black dwarf to leave me the hell alone. She listened. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha aka Geek X Chic and we are here with the season finale of Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Season two, crazy. It feels like we just jumped in, but we're already at the end, but I feel like we've had enough. Last episode was absolutely epic. We had the biggest, I think, budget episode of the show thus far, as far as the scale, the battle. It very much reminded me of the stuff that we saw in the movie. So I definitely think that it was a piece of cinematic excellence and I do hope they get their awards for it. And essentially the summary is that it didn't work out well for the elves. The orcs did manage to push through because they simply overwhelmed them with numbers and also because the elves were hoping to get back up from the dwarves. But unfortunately, because of some domestic trouble, that did not happen. So at the moment, Galadriel is in the wind with the rings. Sauron is still, I believe, in Eregion because he's with, um, um, sorry, he's with Celebrimbor. I'm thinking he's gonna scrape his mind for at least who has the rings before he probably dispenses of them. And then yes, we have the elves on the battlefield who are disheartened and broken and possibly we've lost Aaron Deer, but I'm hoping that's not true. But that's where we're at, not the greatest of tidings, but let's see how we wrap this season up. So let's jump in. Just before I do though, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I do reactions, obviously we are done with season two, but we will definitely be back for season three and beyond. Not to mention that I will react to a lot of other great stuff. So please do join the fam, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and be in the know. All right, that out of the way, guys, let's get into the final episode, which is called Shadow and Flame right now. It's the ring. It has him. Mind and soul. She's telling him this because she knows how soft he is for his dad. Do not follow me down that line. Do it. Oh, I agree. That's so romantic. But literally, don't leave her alone with two kids. You best come back. Kick your, you better spark and kick your dad into the depths of Balrog if you need to, man. Because that's a grown ass man. Dwarf, whatever. Shh, Balrog, there's nothing to see here, okay? Please, just stay sleeping, please. You're not due for like another 2,000 years, bro. Duran, use that lamp. I said, take it off! And I'll take off the whole hunt! Please do. He does not. I'm sorry, you're already shaking that axe. I know you're not serious. But are you strong enough to use it against your father? That is the question, and we know the answer is no. Do you remember when I was a wee lad? I am trying to appeal to his heart now. Oh, God. Take it off. I beg you. He can't hear you right now over the sound of the rain. Come and see, my son. Can Balrog come flying up and literally come snap this man's head the off? The true wealth of our mountain. Just knock the rocks into the place and leave him in there. He can. He and the ring can be together forever. But that's Balrog's horde, man. I don't think he's willing to nego negotiate. Good. Tell me how your ring is going to deal with that. Shh. Yeah. Does your ring have a, an answer for that? Tell me. Quickly. What's the ring have to say for that? Run, father! No. Stand. Yes! Don't be sad. It's supposed to happen during... That's what greed gets you. Balrog said, I told you to leave my ass alone. I told the really smart black dwarf to leave me the hell alone. She listened. That saved your life. Come on, come on, dad. Show me how the ring is gonna fix this. Durin. No, Durin. no, no. Yeah, he's gonna toss the ring up and he's gonna sacrifice himself. Forgive me, my son. Maybe. King Doran. Yep. He's gonna sacrifice himself now. That is his mess, so I'm not, I'm sorry. I feel nothing. Bye. <laughs> Your ex is so cute. Duran, thank you, DC. Sorry, but your dad's a grown man and he's gotta fix the mess that he, he created. At least it all looks pretty legendary. That's the way to go out if you gonna go. Go. 
So the ring is there, right? It doesn't matter. I know there's more, but... All right, well, that is the epic end to King Durin, I guess. Very sad that that's what it took for him to recognize he'd done too much. But it wasn't... I know it's not all his fault. I know it's Sauron's as well, but... Sauron's rings can't feed on something that isn't already there. Is this a wizard? I was wondering if we get to see them again before the end of the season. Have you found your staff yet, friend? Or did he go to rescue Nori? I think he went to rescue Nori. Yep, my man said, out of control magic. Psh, deal with that later. I confess my patience wavered, oh, but my faith in you, old friend, did not. Damn, they do know each other. Because you knew none of us could ever hope to defeat Sauron alone. Mm, and why do you want to defeat Sauron? But your name, even your staff. Hmm, it is a tempting offer. Eleanor Brandyfoot and Poppy Proudfellow, you need not worry. I have seen to it. The small ones are safe. Why are there nobody? Where's there no one in the Hobbit town? Y'all aren't worried about how quiet it is? Foolish to place trust in such low company. That's on y'all. My people were once kings, wizard. Right. Maybe you shouldn't smart talk a man with magic. Okay, bye. Is he the fellow you were looking for out here all along? No. I trust Tom Bombadil. Ignorance and fear of our kind. I hope really? my it's actions because today you... will lead you to know better of me. Can you look at the man with the mask, please? It's yeah. The sort of action you mean. Mm. You pity him whose blade was at your throat. Yes, he didn't hurt her. Yes. Yeah. Walk with me, and in time, we will both be his successors. I don't want to do that. I mean, my eyebrows might end up looking like yours, and who wants that in this world? I would sooner walk this desert forevermore. Nameless and forgotten. My man said my gut told me you nasty. You're destroying the Hobbit's home for what? You couldn't even pretend to be a good guy for, for five minutes? I will be waiting. Sorry, stores. Y'all was really just minding your business. No, not the good! Oh, thank God. Okay! Yes! What's up? Run! What are you staring at all for? Let's go! My man, you know he can't control this ish. So we're getting married? Oh, this hoe. My Miriel was able to bewitch the sea. Be <laughs> All so-called faithful are now declared traitors hmm. of Westerness. Heretics, right? <laughs> Religious persecution. Sound familiar? I'm so sorry that you gave birth to such a hideous creature, Ellen, because, oh my God, your daughter sucks so bad. I need her to meet a, meet a grisly end. Talking to you, huh? No, I don't care if you feel remorse now. Your dad warned you multiple times. And this is all to Sauron's plan. Kingdom of Men shambles. Not that it takes much. Father. Father, like, please. How dare you call me that? Check in there. So this is the vision where he runs away from the city. Where's my queen? Save her. My son Anarion amongst them. I know a ferryman who can get us outside the city. If she says she wants to stay, I'll scream. You must travel only by night. You. Why are you staying? He will kill you. What cowardice have I ever shown to make you think I would even consider making safe my own skin at the peril of yours? I love these two so much. It sucks. It's not there! Did you want You're to die? It is called Narsi. Oh, a new sword. I don't understand why she wouldn't go with him. That man will torture you. 
This kingdom is lost to you, sis. I don't know what to tell you. At least if you lived, you could live to rule again. But I should have known. This is in the vein of Tolkien, even though these characters are not exactly accurate. My man didn't like any happy endings. He did not like love. I don't know what sadness he went through in his life, but nobody got a happy ending but the damn hobbits. <laughs> oh, here we are, back in. Can we even call it a Regan anymore? It's, it's just rubble. Y'all really did fight to the end. No one can call y'all cowards. Okay. I don't know who you are, bro, but you definitely ate up that extra slot. haven't left the city yet, Galadriel? I get it, but sis, you have very valuable cargo. You need to leave. I'm sorry, I know that sounds cold. That is not an easy thing to say, but come on. Yet one job. I'm the one your lord father wants. Set them free, and I will go willingly. Oh. Can't hurt any more than knowing you let your whole city fall. Does that make you feel like a man, Sauron? Tiny dick energy, bro. Born hence by a wind that you can never follow. Good for you, Calibrim boy. <laughs> bro, you should let go, though. I know it's not easy because you guys are a little extra strong, but let go. You really want to piss him off, die. Die immediately. No, heal me. Hear me! Oh, standing up. Shadow of Morgoth. Ooh! Okay, Kellebrim boy. The rings of power shall destroy you. Hmm, they will actually. I foresee one alone shall prove your utter ruin. And his name is Frodo. Man, so. I am the creator. Are you? I think it was Celebrimbor, because you couldn't do it on your own. There you you are the. Yep. Prisoner. So. Lord. Of the rings. Of the rings. Yep. Let go. Good man, Celebrimbor. Also, good job manipulating him into finishing you off. Horrible as that sounds. You know he's right. Hey, bitch. I'm glad Caliburnbor got that one last lick back. Yeah, you realize now you took out your last lead to the rings. Are you him? Are you Sauron? He's going to switch sides. I have many names. Oh, God, every time. It's a yes or no question. I haven't seen these guys in a minute. They're about to see your daddy again, I think. Your fortune. It's back a dagger in the back. Say it cuts a journey short. Ha! <laughs> see, cuts. Oh. I'd wager the damage is done. Oh, are you still sad that your married girlfriend dumped you? Wait, she wasn't even your girlfriend yet. Where are you headed? Aww. Oh. We're hugging folk around here. Bye, moody teenager. You can, uh, set it up there. Oh, we need to shut the door just to drop something off? Hm. Cheater! He asked the gods to keep our love strong as long as the home stood. She's like, I'm going to burn it to the ground. <laughs> but when he said it, I felt ill. Because you're a cheater. Why are you telling me this? I think you know. Just a little something something to let you know, sir. You don't want to get with a woman who's willing to leave her man like this. It tends to be a pattern. What happens the next time a man comes by that, you know, makes her feel some new tinglys and then now you start to make her feel ill. But you're not a very bright boy. Come with me to Numenor. Your poor fiance. We'll build the watchtower in sight of the river, fill a few houses if we need to. 
It's a disgrace the state this place is in. It's not coming. Ah, you're not dead! Your sister will be so pleased to hear we found you. Your sister? I trust there's room on the ship. Plenty. Then one more should be no trouble. There are like... Isn't she married? No passage for no men. My father, post-captain to Queen Regent Miriam. She's not Queen Regent anymore. I'm afraid you're mistaken. My father is now king, and yours is wanted for treason. Oh, thank God you found that out before you stepped on the boat. If I'd had it my way, the old fool would be dead. I saved your life. You missed Shall I have them slaughter the horse? Try it. Try it. Barrack's a, Barrack's a gangster. Disrespect me again. And you really will be lost in middle Earth. I really hate this man. Kill him! But a fortress for its soldiers. And <laughs> she, I am its She's commander. like, all the water's just Any shriveled up because you just got sunned by that guy. <laughs> she don't want to go with you no more. <laughs> Timber, no supplies. But I'm certain that won't be a problem for you. After all, there are only trees. You sure you want to go to Numenor? They're kind of dicks, huh? Yeah, she's like, these are your people? These, these are your people. <laughs> How do you expect to destroy Sauron without your ring? Got nine more. Even wounds that have endured an age can sometimes yet be healed. Fixed his face. You're still ugly. Moving on. Sorry, not to the actor. I mean the character. Please. Adar is the name I earned. With Morgoth, the slaver? Okay. Glad you that's the one you embraced. Help me vanquish Sauron with it. Why won't you use it? That's weird. And I swear to you. Oh. Never to make war on Middle Earth again. Is it because of the ring he wanted to be peaceful? Absenin. No more flames. No more darkness. That is really cool Let how they had the healing the come, between Elf like, Elf. wear off. The betrayal starting for Adar. Now that he's finally come to his senses. But he resisted. So Sauron did this. I don't believe him. The others are pursuing him now. I don't believe him. It's a trap. It's too late. It is never too late. No, for you. Sucks for you, bro. Why are you still standing here? This was the perfect time to run away! And now you've got all nine rings. Oh, Galadriel. Galadriel. Go ahead and make out with him, Galadriel. You know that's your first love right there. Your chill. God, the spittle. Why every time? Galadriel tried to warn your ass. That's why I don't feel bad for you, bro. She told you. So let's just get on your knees already, because you're still here. I don't, I don't, this is beyond useless. Was your design from the beginning? Please. You think too much of me. You do, actually. She's kind of obsessed with you. Do you wish to heal me? I wish to heal all middle earth. Please, I don't want to hear another speech of his. Please. <laughs> Who damaged Elrond's beautiful face? Celebrimbor's works. The wisdom of all who ever dwelt in this place. You're speaking completely foreign language to these things right now. Take our lives, but leave it be, I think. <laughs> oh, Elrond, you're so naive. You think that these baselings have any type of understanding of what that means to you? Or cares? <laughs> Elrond is a badass, y'all. Burn. <sighs> He's still alive. Oh, thank God. Oh, please. Please let him live, please. I beg. Please. I know Elrond makes it, but please. Damn, Galadriel. I can't even feel bad for you, Carol, because you should have done ran. 
We are not alike. We never were. It was just another of your illusions. Not so all of it. He's not wrong. Oh, the Sparta kick! Not high enough, unfortunately. Oh, that was fast. He's like, now do I look like the man you want to sleep with? <laughs> oh, he stopped you in your tracks. God, these elves are simple. They have the audacity to think that they're greater creatures than other Middle Earth people. You know who would never have fallen for this? Durin! Oh. Can you fight yourself? You should. Oh, damn, okay. But yeah, now she's fighting angry. So, bye, Galadriel. The door is shut. <laughs> what did this rock do to y'all, man? Let me find It's not your fa real face anyway. Where's the black blood? I would have placed a crown upon your head. The one that's in my chest? I'll, I'll pass, thanks. <laughs> Don't trust her though, I had to kick that sword out of the way. <laughs> the dwarves did come! <laughs> yes, they're in there, yes! <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so happy he's okay, my baby! I know you don't get your revenge on Adar, but he's dead, though. No. Narvi, but he's coming. The prince is in mourning. But he still ah, sent the yeah. army. Galadriel. Your ring. Get out of my head. It feels gross. You wish to heal, Middle Earth. Heal yourself. Bitch! That's called autonomy. Twice elves did that to you today. Say thank you, elves. A little late, but ooh. It's okay, guys. She's flying. She, she, she's flying. You didn't know that, but glad you can fly. Dwarves are securing the elves' retreat if we pursue many orders. <laughs> yeah, aren't you guys glad you'd switch to that, son? I mean, you deserve that though, turncoat. Twice you've turncoated, not once, but twice. I do love that though. Even though the doors were stupid, I love that twice they defied him in ways he didn't expect. And that's exactly what ended up being his downfall. But that's what happens to people who are arrogant and narcissistic often. Is that you, G? Oh, look at the soft ground that cradled you. I feel like the ring probably saved her life though. We know it has the power to heal and she's still clutching it. Yeah, she needs it. It's it's probably the only thing that's gonna save her. They're losing her. Put the, the ring on her, El Elrond. Elrond. We Come on. Save her. We can. Ugh, I know he doesn't want to put it on, but I thought putting it on her would be enough. Title haired indeed. Curls are curling. That activator, that that post battle activator is really doing wonders. Oh, wonders! I meant to say. Sorry. Oh, I know. So, and she just talked in the last episode about how important this place was to her. And I get it, but it's just things. Things can be replaced. Lives, not so much. Some things lost are lost forever. Disa looking stunning even in grief. Oh, that's really cool what they did with the throne. Bye, Eregian. I'm sorry, bro. At least some of the elves were able to survive. To put them back together. Wow, you're loving. I wouldn't have taken her back. Traitorous hoe. Much bigger than any of us. Why is he going back? But I guess he thinks his dad and sister are there, so. Oh my gosh, you chained up a blind woman. You're such a man. FYI, I know that a lot of blind people out there are badasses. I'm just saying, in this particular case, we know she's not. She's still learning. Mr. Boros says. And there is their premonition. What's broke is broke. 
and wrong to fix. I, want, I don't want him to miss his Sildor again. And all anybody can do is try and build something new. Interesting lines to leave on Sauron, of all people. Thank you kindly, Grandel. <laughs> we'll just go with it. Goodbye, Grandel. So I guess they're going to head back to... Grand Elf. Grand Elf. Grand Elf. It's high time I walked my path. And you walked yours. We are very different creatures, Nori. Indeed. So she's heading back home now? Fair enough. Grand Elf has things he needs to do. Things he's been avoiding. The Bombadil told you, you need to get yourself together first, bro. You're kind of a danger to them until you do. Maybe you'll find your staff in here. Yeah, this is definitely Gandalf. That looks very much like what we saw in the Lord of the Rings movies. And if it not, it's a damn good doppel. I had a feeling that... Tom was telling him he had to choose between, but I had a feeling that because it's Gandalf that his path would lead him to the staff by rescuing Nori because that's what was important to him. A hedgehog teapot's adorable. Oh my God, I want it. I want it. This show should have a prop shop. I don't know if they do, but they need to open one immediately. It was all a test, wasn't it? Was it? Another one of your riddles. I was meant to choose friendship. Over power. Were you? A wizard does not find his staff. It finds him. Ooh, deep. Like his name. Grand Elf. Grand Elf. Grand Elf. I guessed right in season one. Now let the song begin. Yay. What are you up to, a hole? I think I'm right. I think this is Saruman. People were saying they don't think so. I think this is Saruman. Tell him, Kazadum stands ready to offer aid once more. We have troubles of our own, my love. Yeah. The lords of the Blue Mountains paid him vast tribute. And they want him back. But you are not your father's prepared heir. But some of the other dwarf lords are advancing claims. <sighs> and him. Um, the brother seems to be gathering support. Have we seen this brother? Do I remember brother from last season? I don't. Oh no, you swore you promised. Pity. I've never known you to be such peaceable company. <laughs> He's like, you are best when you shut up. Rest. We are safe here. <laughs> safe relative. Not while Sauron still breathes. The sanctuary, protected by the elven rings. Oh, look who isn't willing to take it off. <laughs> yeah, the way they're addicts for these rings, man, it's terrifying. Oh, dear, I'm so glad you're okay, Bill. Commander. Narondir. We must decide whether to attack and bring the fight to him or to fall back to prepare our defenses. Hmm. Hard question. What course would you advise, Commander Calathriel? Yeah. Asking a woman's advice. We love it. Oh, the king actually is letting you speak. And I mind our people. It is not strength that overcomes darkness. But light! But light. And the sun yet shines. Stop simping, Elrond. Oh, they're looking to you guys. Wow, how come you're all up on this elevated mountain top? Feels elitist. I know that we made it out of Oregion, but maybe not so much noise. Orcs have got great hearing. That is a gorgeous shot, though. 
kudos to the CGI team. Lots of great scenes, like cinematography in this show. You don't have to like the show, baby, but you can't hate on the cinematography. I'm sorry. I don't believe you. I just don't. <laughs> Ooh, okay, guys. Well, that was it for season two of Ring of Power. Rings of Power, I should say. And I think that was a great conclusion. I really think this season overall was fantastic. And yeah, I, that's all I'm gonna say. I know a lot of people have got some opinions, but I really, really love to see is that quite a few articles have come out in the last couple of weeks, particularly since last episode, that are like, oh yeah, maybe people are a little too quick to judge the show. Yeah, you think? <laughs> like, I think I mentioned this earlier in the season. Last season, I got a lot of people in my comments with some negativity talking about they don't like this show or that it's terrible, blah, blah, blah. To which I have to say two things. One, you're still out here watching it and getting under all these comments and just boosting traffic to it. So thank you, because you know, even haters have their job. And secondly, you don't have to watch, <laughs> right? If you don't like it, if it's not to your liking, guess what? The books still exist and you can read them as many times as you want and enjoy that experience. But this is different. This is, it is based on the source material, but whenever you take something from a literary medium and you move it to a different medium, such as television or movies, Things have to change, folks. They're different mediums. You can't lift and shift. People are sometimes wanting to have like a page by page breakdown and that's just not feasible and it doesn't work that way. But I get it. If that's what you want or if that's what you would prefer and you're not seeing it, you don't have to watch, guys. No one, at least I don't think there's someone in your house holding a weapon to your head saying you must watch this show or you know everyone you love dies. Like it's not that deep. It's not that deep. You don't like it, great. Watch something else. But to sit there and be going out of your way to get under people's comments to be like, oh, I hate this show. It's terrible. Like, okay, what am I supposed to do with that information? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure there's like hate groups you can like join together if that's what you want to do. But like, I've reacted to both seasons of this show because I enjoy it. I enjoy fantasy shows. I enjoy fantasy storytelling. And there's not enough shows on TV with these grandiose worlds and ideas. And those are the types of things I've always been a big fan of. So I like it. And honestly, as I said before, this season to me has done so well. I like the first season too, though. Like I honestly didn't think it was as terrible as everyone said. I think that this show has always taken it when it comes to acting, when it comes to set design, when it comes to cinematography, when it comes to the scripts, like they have not missed on those counts. If there's anything that may have been, you know, critiquable would potentially be some of the timeline shifts and changes. Like it has been a long time since I've read some of the books. So I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of details that have, <laughs> have left my brain. And I know that people have said that they've definitely shifted some things as far as their order and sequence in the books versus the show. But my thing is, if you're going to make changes, does it make sense for the story, right? Like that's, that would be the justification that I look at when I look at a show that's based on story source material. Do the changes if you decide to make changes. Will they make sense for the story you're trying to tell the to tell in the show? And does it actually still tell a good story? And then does it also give you the gist of the characters or the story you're trying to tell? And if the answer to all three of those questions is yes, then I'm fine with it. Like it's not that big a deal. These are not autobiographical accounts, people. This is a fantasy story based in a fantasy world. And people, oh, if Tolkien was here, he'd roll over his grave. No, he wouldn't. Tolkien would be counting his coins at the bank right now if he was still alive, just like that Mr. Martin who refuses to finish my damn book series. <laughs> Give us the next book, George. Sorry, <clears throat> sidebar. But you know what I'm saying? That's what he would do, please. Tolkien is also really over 100 years old. The kind of things that he would have been thinking and writing about 100 years ago, they don't apply now. The world has changed, okay? <laughs> That's the other thing people forget is that a lot of the adaptations that we have, particularly for screen, also take into account the fact that the world is different. Cinema is different, TV is different, media is different, right? You can't take a book that was written almost a hundred years ago or by a person who would be over a hundred years old today who would have grown up in a completely different world than what we live in today and think that the exact same things are gonna apply now. They just don't, they just don't. So anyways, that's, that's enough of my rant, but I really think this season was fantastic and I really like the way they built from episode one right up till now to just watching Sauron's plan piece by piece, chess move by chess move, everything that he's doing to put this plan into action that is based almost purely on the fact that he has studied all these races for a very long time and figured out ways to manipulate them based on their own weaknesses 
like I said, if he wasn't a villain, I'd have to stand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As a character, I do stand. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't, I can't be standing nobody who wants to enslave everybody. But you have to give respect to the dedication, the intricacy, the amount of forethought that was put into this. And the fact that they did such a good job of laying that out for us over the last eight episodes, I think, is fantastic. And I really enjoy it all the more because while I love the Lord of the Rings movies, they really don't give us a lot on Sauron. Like he's just like this overarching looming villain, right? He's the eye that we see flash on and off for the first two movies. And then eventually he's just a big eye in a tower. Like he's not terrifying in the least is my point, right? <laughs> in, the, in the movies, I'm like, big red eye. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know, like it's not scary, right? You're more scared of the orcs, if anything else. Shalob, the giant spider is probably the scariest villain we had in all three books or all three movies. But this show, I think, is doing the right thing in showing why Sauron was so terrifying. What makes him such a bad villain? What makes him something that really shook Middle Earth to its core? They're doing that. They're showing us that. And they're also giving Sauron his own personification, his own reasonings, his own mission, his own objectives, because you I'm sure we've all heard the expression that every villain is the hero of his own story. And hearing how delusional Sauron is, in his mind, he's doing the right thing, right? He's like, I'm doing the right thing. You see, Morgoth, he, he just wanted to destroy everything. He wanted to just take everybody out and have a world of orcs. No, 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 I'm better than that, right? This is Sauron's thinking, I'm better than that. I just want everyone to listen to me because I know it's best. You know, I, I'm, I'm better than these Middle Earthers. I understand. So let me just figure out a way to make them all listen to me. Okay, I know talking's not gonna work. So I'm gonna do this other grand plan of creating these rings that are all, of course, under my control. And then I will have everyone do what I want. But it's gonna be for their benefit. Don't worry. It's not what you think. I know it sounds bad, you know, enslaving your minds. But really, it's so that they listen to me, right? I mean, it still sounds insane, but you know, this season we discovered that Sauron was tortured for many, many, many years, possibly millennia by Morgoth. That's not going to leave a mind intact, right? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen uh, people who've gone through long periods of abuse. They're not okay, typically. They don't come out of that uh, full without, without help and therapy, you know, and there's no such thing in these worlds. So Sauron's not okay. He is crazy, and I would almost venture, if you want to extrapolate even more, I would even venture to say that part of his delusions, part of this new narcissism that he's created is a way for him to deal with the fact that he was in that abusive situation for so long. Like somewhere long, along, far along in the past, Sauron's mind broke and it never quite came back. And now this delusion of grandeur in his own mind is what's kept him from completely losing it. And then it became even more desperate for him after his own orcs stabbed him to death, right? Or to death. So I just really like that this season did a great job of giving us Sauron's perspective of why he thinks, like why he's doing this, his impetus, right? Because you need a reason for a villain to do something. I personally feel like the best stories let us know what everyone is up to, right? Not just the heroes. We know what the, drives the heroes. That's pretty clear right? Worldwide threat. Don't want to fall under worldwide threat. That's a pretty good motivator to come together and do the right thing. But why is a villain doing these things? Why would somebody think, oh, why is my face so itchy? Sorry. Why would somebody think that the idea of enslaving billions of people is a good idea? That raising a whole city of people to, to the ground is a good idea in the name of good? Like what, what would be the impetus behind that? Saying that you're doing it for good purposes. And we got that this season. We see where Sauron is coming from. I don't agree. Most sane people realize it's absolute crazy talk, but at least we know what's driving him and why he thinks it's important because it's important to know that. Why is he willing to go to these lengths? And so what I really liked about this season, but even in this episode is the challenge in thinking that he gets, right? I mean, he hasn't really interacted with any men at this point. Yeah, I say there's no men that, um have the ability to talk to him on this level. He didn't even want to try to talk to <laughs> my boy Durin, but I think it's because he knew that Durin is a mind he can't pen penetrate. But the elves really are the ones that gave Sauron pause a few times throughout this season. And it could be because elves have been around as long as he has, or just about as long as he has. So they have more of an idea of that, that they've got that long lens that only comes from existing for so long. But I do like that we, we had a few moments of that. Celebrimbor several times, 
last episode and this episode challenging Sauron's thinking like, you know, explain to me again why this is right. Explain to me again how you're justifying this. Explain to me again how what you're doing isn't hypo like completely hypocritical. And we see that, you know, to, for a while, Sauron would try to talk in circles and we saw him use the same manipulation tactics because he only has like a few arse, like he only, only has a few things in his arsenal, right? Only a few tricks in his bag. Now that we, we've gone through a whole season of it, it's very clear that he doesn't have a very deep bag of tricks. He basically has three things. He either goes for whatever it is that you're greedy about, pokes at your ego, or tries to go for your emotions, right? Get you upset, get you riled up. Those are his three tricks. Now he's got a lot of variety in those tricks, but those are basically the three that he goes to. And when he can't get those things to work, he just gets angry and violent, <laughs> which means you're winning, right? <laughs> so that's what he did with Calabrimbo, right? He appealed to his ego first. That's what happened. Right? He knew he was a master craftsman. He knew that he wanted to create something that was going to outlive his legacy. He sat there and inflated that. But then when Calabrimbo started to realize, okay, wait, maybe I'm crossing into territory that's not okay. When that stopped working, he then went for trying to poke at his ego, right? Oh, do you want to be the one who's responsible for all of man falling? Of evil happening? Oh, you better get back to, and you get back to work. Otherwise, it's going to be your fault that everything fell apart, Right? And then when that stopped working, he went for, I'm going to try to guilt you. I'm going to try to get to your emotions. Oh, look what you did. Like, I just gave you all the peace you wanted so you could finish your rings. You're mad at me from keeping you from seeing your city falling apart. But didn't you want to work on the rings? Right? So all those things. He's got an arsenal. And of course, as I said, he just kind of cycles through the th same three things, which sadly are very, very effective. <laughs> But when they stopped working, which they did at the end, he just lost it. Right? So in the end, when we see him torturing Calabrimbor to get the information of where the rings are and Calabrimbor isn't breaking, right? And he had to be in a lot of pain. Like, how many arrows did he have? Like, what, 10 arrows in his body? It had to hurt. It had to hurt a lot. But Calabrimbor at that point, I feel like that's where Sauron, again, does not understand. That's where you know something's broken up here. And maybe it's because he's never actually loved anything to that extent. But he would, if Calabrimbor, sorry, if um Sauron actually understood the spirit, he would know that the pain might have worked before you raised Eregion to the ground, before you destroyed his city, before you killed thousands of his people, before he basically lost everything that he took pride in. You might have been able to torture it out of him, but you literally took everything that meant anything to this man. If he had a family, thank God he didn't. But if he'd had a family, you probably would have been gotten him to talk if he thought there was a chance to save them. But you took everything that that man cared about and you destroyed it in front of him. And then you thought he was going to what, give you the last of it? He was going to be like, oh, yeah, okay. Let me give you the satisfaction of just ruining. <laughs> no, Sauron, you don't understand the spirit at, at all because then you would have known he was never going to talk. And I really love that in those last moments, Calabrimbor turned his own medicine on him and said, okay, you're coming at me with all these. Remember, he started doing the tricks again, like, oh, look what you've done to yourself. All, all, all these arrows, you've done this to yourself. I'm going to heal the world. You just don't want to see it. Tell me where the rings are and I can fix it. Please let me, like, let me fix the world. And Calabrimbor's like, look, all these things don't matter. I see through the smoke now. I can, I can deal with a little more pain if that's what it's going to take. And then we heard Sauron say, I can keep you alive. And that's where I was like, bro, this is why you shouldn't have opened your mouth. <laughs> I would have just been like, oh no, I would have pretended like I was really breaking until I actually died. But in the end, my boy Calabrimbo brought that back. He brought it back and said, bro, the problem is he's like, these elves, they will always defy you. You're never going to win these things. He's like, you think you've created this thing to control other people yet. Look at you. You're here filling me full of arrows to get your hands on nine little pieces of metal. And you think I'm the one who's a slave here? You think I'm the one who's the problem? It's like you, you made a box for yourself. You boxed yourself in. This plan, if it doesn't work, you're done. And what's more, he's like, one day someone is going to be here and doing something you haven't accounted for. One person is gonna be the thing that ends you. And we all know from the books, that's exactly what ended up happening. And we see it, like the realization for the first time in all season, really, yeah we see Sauron kind of break out of the mask of his arrogance because he hears Celebrimbor, really hears him and realizes, shit, <laughs> he's actually right. <laughs> like, I, I do need these rings now. Without these rings, my plan falls apart. Without these rings, I can't do anything. I can't take over Middle Earth. If, I, if these rings disappear and I just took out my ring maker, what do I do, right? So yeah, we see that moment and he's really upset with himself, right? You can see that he's kind of like, damn, I, I did kind of put myself in a corner, didn't I? And then of course he's so angry 
at that realization, like I said, when all of his tricks st stopped working, he resorted to anger and violence and he gives Celebrimbo, he deals the final blow. And I also think that's the other reason he got upset is he realized in that last moment that he had played into Celebrimbor's hand in that case. But also I do think um, there's a lot of people who are saying that, I don't think Sauron's above feeling emotion. I don't think it's that he doesn't care about anything. I just think that he's so far dissociated and detached from things that he doesn't feel it often. And he often probably mistakes curiosity for, for feeling. I think at this point, but anyway, I do think he genuinely, I don't think he was lying in last episode or the episode before when he said, I am sad our time's coming to an end. I am sad that we're not gonna spend time like we, we really have learned a lot from each other. And I mean, Sauron wasn't always evil, right? We know that they've already said like Sauron is very, very old. There was a time he existed before. I don't think he was always this power hungry and driven. So I do think there's semblances of who he was at one point, right, that come through. And I do think he felt a level of camaraderie with Celebrimbor. And I do think that if Celebrimbor had been willing to buy into his twisted cause, he definitely would have considered Celebrimbor someone dear. But I do think he had a certain respect for Celebrimbor and he didn't really want it to end like that. So anyway, good on Celebrimbor. I give him props for not going out like a punk and... As I said, I, I don't really feel that bad for him because in the end, it kind of was his responsibility, but I don't put all blame on him. Obviously, the real blame falls on Sauron. He was a great deceiver. He really did use Celebrimbor for the worst. You know, he really took that beautiful ambition he had as a craftsman and just twisted it into something that was gross. And yeah, uh, a lot of us probably would have fallen into the same trap, you know, to be fair. So anyway, RIP Celebrimbor, you did, you did the best you could. And then we see that the whole city went up in flames as well, as, far, as well as all of his, the history of his work and all the work that he did. That may not be a bad thing though, because even though, yes, a lot of his other craftsmanship was obviously beautiful and wonderful, the rings were probably in there and we don't need any more of those. We don't want anyone to go back and revisit making more rings, you know? So it may not have been a bad thing that we lost at all. But before we get to that, we see that that one orc who, I keep forgetting his name, they did show his name in the in the subtitles, but there was the orc who we saw that was turning on Adar, right? When he kept asking Adar to like pull back, retreat, when he was trying to protect the orcs, right? Because Adar did, Adar fed a lot of dreams, especially to that particular orc. I don't know who that orc was to him, but that was kind of like his right-hand man. Adar sold the whole dream of like, I'm protecting you guys. I, we took out Sauron because I don't want you to sacrifice your lives unnecessarily. I want us to just find a place in this world and be safe. And that whole battle of Eregion went against everything Adar said, it was the fact that he became so singularly minded about getting this city and potentially taking Sauron out again after all was said and done and not going there himself, by the way, sending the orcs in to do it. That's where that one else said, okay, no, this is feeling a lot like Sauron all over again. Like you told us you cared about us and then you're acting opposite. And that's why when he shows up there after Sauron takes out Celebrimbor and we see that orc show up and see Sauron, he's ready to jump sides now because while... He clearly didn't have any love for Sauron. He probably figured at least Sauron told us straight up his plans for us, right? If, we, if you remember back to episode one, Sauron didn't lie to them. He was like, yeah, a lot of y'all gonna die for what I have proposed, but this is my plan. And once I, you know, once some of y'all die, <laughs> once a lot of y'all die, actually, my plan will be in place and then everything will be peaceful and then we'll be okay. Right? And they didn't like the sound of that. But like I said, at least Sauron was honest. Whereas Adar was saying, no more meat shields. I want you guys to live a life of peace and quiet. And then it looked like he was a big fat liar in the end. Do I think Adar actually lied to them? No. I do think he genuinely did want to give them a peaceful life. I think that's where his heart was, but Sauron manipulated him, right? He appealed to the ego of Adar and also what he wanted most. Adar wanted most to get rid of Sauron. He had beef with Sauron that ran deep. More than anything, he wanted to get this man out. We'll never know maybe why those two were beefing so hard, but that unfortunately overshadowed the love that he had for the orcs. And that's why he ended up following right into Sauron's plan by doing that siege, even though he was warned, not only by his fellow orcs, but Galadriel was like, bro, think about it. You're playing into his hands. If you want to screw Sauron over right now, you want to get him to a place where he's genuinely vulnerable, don't attack Aregion. But nope, fortunately Adar was also a victim of his pride. And so it ended up literally being the end of him. But I do like, that's why we had that one um, orc ready to jump over to Sauron's side, right? So Sauron now has the orcs back, at least the ones that survived. I think a lot of the ones that were loyal to Adar probably are gone. And if not, 
they're not gonna fight Sauron at this point because it looks like these orcs really just can't self-manage. They need a leader. They don't seem to do well when they have to make their own decisions. So anyhow, that's where we were with Sauron for that uh, by Celebrimbor. Um, should be, yeah, I wanna come back. I wanna come back to kind of the final moments with Sauron. Back to the mountain, under the mountain, sad things happen. Pretty predictable though. I kind of knew that when we saw the dad managing to make it through to the wall where Balrog was, I'm like, yeah, there's no way King Durin's walking away from this. We're losing him. And it was sad because I knew like, as soon as like Disa was yelling after Durin about going after his dad, I was like, Durin ain't gonna do nothing. He's an absolute baby when it comes to his dad. And I'm not mad at him for it, honestly, because I, as much as I'm yelling at him in the screen saying like, bro, what you gonna do? I don't know that I could cut my, my dad's hand off. <laughs> I don't think I probably could, if, even if he was being crazy, as much as I'd love to say I could. It is really hard. So I can't be mad at him, but I am frustrated that it, like, I'm like, you can at least knock him out, bro. Like you don't actually have to cut his hand off. Just if you give him a good enough smack to the head, that would knock him out long enough, for you, long enough for you to grab the ring. But you know, bless Durin. He just kept thinking like, I gotta be able to appeal to him. Like maybe I can get him to love me, like the love he has for me to come through enough to break through this spell. But Poor Durin does not realize how powerful those damn rings are. Like he really, I mean, he, d he did and seeing what it did to his dad, but I still think in his mind, he thinks that it was more of a matter because his dad was already predisposed to that, that like the ring was that powerful because his dad was already greedy, which is true, but he doesn't realize the magic. He doesn't know the, the, the dark power that was put into those rings, right? He has no idea Sauron made those rings at this point still, right? He just knows that they came from the elves. Yeah, unfortunately we lost King Durin because yeah, he was all proud of himself. Like, look what the ring showed me. I mean, there was a lot of mithril in that cave to be fair. Like that's like a lifetime supply in there. But we see that Balrog was like, I warned you once and I warned you twice. And I said, don't come for me if I didn't send for you. So somebody go pay the price today. So that was King Durin. And as soon as he saw what, you know, that Disa was right, at least he had enough wherewithal and love for his son at the end to not just be like, you know, you guys deal with it, peace out, <laughs> which is what I would have done. No, um, he takes the ring off and he think, no, he. T I thought maybe he left it like close to him, like on his side of the cave, but it looks like he put it closer to Durin. And then he basically said his goodbyes. And like I said, I was like, that was an epic shot. Like that could be a poster of him flying at Balrog with an ax in his hand. I was like, King Durin, you annoyed me for most of the show, but you went out like a baller. That was a great, that's a great look to go out on. Um, clearly got taken out in one smack, but he didn't go out like a punk. So I do appreciate that. Poor Durin though had to witness that and that's gonna haunt his dreams, but good lesson for him, I would think you'd hope. So that's what's happening under the mountain. The king is dead and it should be fairly simple. <laughs> you would think it's fairly simple, but it turns out that there is some mess because we see that thankfully Durin did send the army to back up Elrond as soon as he was able, like once that situation was dealt with, he was able to send the army and I'm thankful he did that because he really didn't have to at that point. He could have been like, well, we missed the battle, too bad. But he did and I am I think for Elrond, the relationship between him and Elrond especially, that's gonna be vital. But also I think that the elves now should have a little bit more respect anyways for the dwarves. But anyway, he did send his people off and then he was telling Narvi, his right-hand guy, that hey, you know, we can you tell Elrond that if he needs my army for anything else, we're, we're good. But then Disa, ever the voice of reason, she lets him know that things in the mountain are far from settled, even though they're, the situation with their dad and his tyranny are now over. Now there's a vacuum, right? There was a king under the mountain and his dad did a lot of damage before he went out in that we saw what he did with demanding the tithe from the other lords, the exorbitant tithe from them. And that he, they were like, yeah, well now we want it back because it was unfair, right? He said, remember he promised them the rings, right? He said, if you exchange for an insane amount of gold, I'll give you these rings that are gonna like make you richer than God basically. So yeah, she's like, they want their, like they paid a lot. So they either want their gold back or they want the rings, but they most likely want the rings, right? Because that's, that that insane payment means nothing if they are gonna get what, what Prince or so what King Durin promised them. And then the second problem is that Durin has a brother who I'm trying to, I don't think we met him. I honestly don't think we've met Durin's brother yet. If we have, I've just completely blocked him out and my apologies, but I really don't remember him at all. So there is a brother and he's saying that some of the dwarf, dwarf loads are like, dwarf lords 
are basically saying that they think that King Durin would have wanted his brother to sit the, the throne, not him. And we got to remember that last season, King Durin did strip Durin Jr. of his prince title and everything. So people don't forget is the point, right? Clearly the dwarves didn't forget that daddy and son were fighting for a good chunk of, of last season and even this season. So just because he got the necklace back and the, and the title back in the last few, in the last little while here, doesn't mean that people think that that makes, it doesn't erase everything, I guess is my point in the minds of the people. So Disa was just basically saying, we might have a little civil problem here just still, right? If you and your brother end up fighting for the throne, it could be a problem and you don't want to send out our military when there could potentially be a civil issue or worse between the different dwarf kingdoms, right? So yeah, unfortunately, as much as I'm, I think Durin would love to make sure that he's back up for the elves, he's just saying, she just speak. I don't think she's saying don't help Elrond, but you know, we got our own problems. We got problems in the nest, you know? And again, this is all part of Sauron's plan. He doesn't want anybody to be united right now. The easiest way to take over things is when people are divided. Divided, we're conquered, united, we stand, something along those lines. I think I'm getting that slightly wrong, but you get the point, right? It's easy to conquer things that are not unified. And that's exactly what Sauron wants. And he, so he's got the dwarves now scrambling. They're not on the same page by any stretch. And then we see that Durin looked at the rings because he realized his dad had promised them. And he already knows that the rings are evil. But I think what's going to sadly probably push Durin to push putting that damn blue devil of a ring on, if not next season, the one after, is it's probably going to get ugly under the mountain. And he's going to feel like the only way to get the dwarves in hand, in line, is going to be by wearing the ring and them all having the rings under his control. Like, I just, I just can't see it going any other way, despite what he promised Disa. So that's the dwarves. And... Then we had the wizard. That was a great, finally Gandalf, the name. I pretty much predicted it was him last season. There was definitely some debate because people said the timelines don't add up from when Gandalf was sent to Middle Earth versus when he's appearing here. But it just felt like there were too many, there were just too many things that were leading up to saying it has to be him from always having the slightly gray clothing, the look, the beard, but mostly the affinity for hobbits. Like I was doing a little bit of, I didn't do too much, but I did a little bit of research into looking into the different Istars that came to the world. And to make a long story short, none of them had an affinity for hobbits except for Gandalf. Like that's the bottom line. He's the only one who really took a sweet spot to halflings. And so I'm like, what are the chances they're gonna bring in another character who is fond of halflings, right? That looks like Gandalf and sounds like Gandalf and is a crazy powerful wizard. Like. It just feels like, it feels like it's him. So we got that confirmation this episode. And as I also uh, brought out in the episode, when he went and chose to choose, pick, because we saw last episode, Tom Bobadil told him he had to choose between finding his staff and controlling his power or saving his friends. And we see that, and I kind of knew he would, he was going to save Nori. Even though both, both, you understood why saving Nori was a noble thing, but considering that he almost sent Nori halfway across Middle-earth with the last <laughs> magical burst he had. Controlling his magic is equally as important. But in the end, Gandalf always follows his heart and he went to protect Nori or see if he could save Nori. And it's a good thing he did because I do think that Dark Wizard would have just wasted the town if Gandalf didn't show up. But this wizard said that he knew him, called him old friend. That could be a lie. I think he just knew that he was an Istar, but I don't know if he knew which Istar it was. But I guess he would, though, because he had his memory back. So I still think it's Saruman, guys. I know people are saying, no, Saruman was a good white wizard, but was he always? Because I was doing my research on Saruman, and he wasn't always nice, guys. He actually was a power-hungry asshole. So... <laughs> Uh, okay, that's a little bit extreme. My point is he always wanted power. He didn't become the white until much later. So I do think this is Saruman. I think this is an early version of Saruman. And I think that he very much was on that power trip again. But then, you know, spoiler alert, if you haven't read the books and don't want to know, um, Sauron gets defeated again physically. And that's when Saruman is probably going to be like, oh crap, okay. Well, so now that he's gone and Middle-earth came together to take him down, if I try to rise up, it's not going to go well. So let me just back off and just do my thing. And that's when I think he becomes Saruman the White. And then he stays that way until, of course, Sauron rises again and then he works with him. So 
Pom- that's the thing with Bombadil, right? We heard that in the episode, Gandalf said that some, he says that Bombadil talks in riddles. Bombadil did say that the Dark Wizard and Sauron want to work again, want work together, but he didn't say when. Note that. He didn't say right now. So it could mean that they want to work together right now or maybe, I don't know, 2,000 years in the future, right? <laughs> it's nothing to Tom Bombadil, right? The man's immortal. So anyways, um, I do think that it's still Saruman. That's, that's still my, I still feel pretty confident that the Dark Wizard is Saruman for now. And I don't know if we're going to hear his name. We probably aren't going to hear a name drop until maybe next season or afterwards, but that's my prediction. So anyways, uh, Gandalf comes faces off against the dark wizard, but not really though, because you know, Gandalf doesn't have really control of his magic at this point. But Saruman basically says, look, walk with me, work with me and we'll take over this world together. Like, just let me help you get your memories back. AKA, let me shape you the way that I think I want you to be. But thankfully Gandalf's gut ain't never been wrong. And even though he, he ain't got his memories back, he's like, I already know that I, I could walk this desert till I drop dead of dehydration. It ain't happened. I'm not doing it. Cause I know going with you is going down the road to hell. So no. So we see that uh, the Dark Wizard wastes out the village, but thankfully Gandalf is able to save the lives of the hobbits, even though their home is destroyed. And it's where he's, where he's supposed to be because he protected all those lives. And we see that despite the beautiful uh, um, message that the Gund had about home and how important it is, we see Nori's message coming to light now about basically how home is where your heart is. It's where your family is. So they're about to migrate. My guess is maybe that Nori and Poppy are going to take them back to their group because they're already nomad masters and they can help these people out and obviously we know poppy wasn't gonna leave her new man nobody so yeah we see that nori basically said look you know i think it's time i go home like we we have different paths to walk now i think you know you kind of have your person you found the person who's supposed to teach you what you need to do you got to run so that's kind of like your that was the quest for me was to accompany you to to run and now you're here you've got bombadil you're on your way i gotta go and you know you gotta do your thing without having to worry about me so touching sweet sad i do hope it's not the the last we see of nori but i kind of get it she doesn't really have path outside of this at this point if they do give her a new one that'd be great but at this point i really do think she was kind of the stepping stone to us getting to know who Gandalf is and why Gandalf has such an affinity for hobbits. So if we don't see her again, I, I understand story-wise, but I do still like her character. So who knows? We'll see. But yes, we have that name now. Gandalf stumbled upon his staff while he was there. And it's the same staff he had right up until the whole, you know, all the way up to the Lord of the Rings series. So yeah, he was exactly where he was supposed to be. And yeah, so when he went back to Bombadil, he's like, it was a test. Like what you what you told me when you left me up there in front of all those dead trees was a test for me to figure out my path. And Gandalf's path has always been prioritizing the lives of Middle Earth people above all else. And so that's what he did. And he found the staff, or as Bombadil said, the staff found him. So yeah, really nice wrap up to that. So him and Bombadil are together and I guess they're gonna start off their training now that Gandalf has got his staff back. He can begin to get his mind right and slowly get himself back to a place where he'll actually be able to be the person to eventually face off against the Dark Wizard and Sauron. So that was that. And then finally we have oh, my girl Galadriel. She is helping the elves that she can escape. I know I was being rough in the episode, but honestly, I was like, girl, you have one job. You got these nine rings. You could have... On your own, you could have gotten out the city and on a horse and a thousand miles in the wrong direction by now, but I can't be mad at her. You know, these are her people and she can't just sit there and see screaming babies and walk away. So I get it. I get it, people. I'm just being, you know, from a logical standpoint, she made a wrong mistake. <laughs> she made the wrong decision. But from a human or an elfin or a heart standpoint, she absolutely made the right choice. So I'm not mad at her for that, but it was annoying. Anyway, she managed to get them out of the city only to walk straight into... Adar's trap and we see that she ends up saying okay spare the lives of these elves and I will give him these rings but it's kind of in her plan anyways because she's like we need someone to help take this man out anyway so she gets back to Adar and we see that the ring has healed Adar he's got her ring on and his we see what he looked like before all the torture of Morgoth and I mean yeah it, it's it makes him look a little bit more approachable, that's for sure. But yeah, we see that Galadriel also kind of looks at him and like, I think she feels that finally feels like a level of kinship with him because she very, she very much othered him last season and now seeing him in his 
pure elfin form, I guess you could say, she suddenly wants to know like, what was your elfin name? Like, what was your life? Like, wh what family did you come from? You know, I don't think it really registered to her until that moment that he really was an elf at one point. But anyways, he basically said, look, it doesn't matter what my name was. That was a long ass time ago. I haven't been that person for a long time, but he said, I earned the name Adar and I want to be that person again. And I think what he meant was like an honorable person. Cause I think what the healing ring did, I don't think it just healed his scars. And I think seeing his face again, probably unlocked something that had been buried in Adar for a long time. And you know, as I mentioned before about how Sauron has been broken because of the torture, it's no different for Adar, right? I think he kind of had to forget who he was in order to continue on after everything that happened to him. So anyways, I think that the ring healed a lot more is my point. And that's why he suddenly felt some type of way about everything. And that's why he was like, he willingly gave the ring back to Galadriel and was like, let's fix this. Like, I don't want this anymore. Him coming to that real realization was just a little too late, unfortunately, because as I mentioned earlier, the orcs had turned and he got swindled by the one that he thought he could trust. But as I said, you know, you can't trust people who are turncoats, guys. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm always side-eyeing people who, who cannot maintain loyalties. And that work that was his right-hand man has switched twice. <laughs> he switched from Sauron to Adar, then Adar back to Sauron. You can't trust him. That's why I wasn't mad when Sauron put a, a knife through his throat because he's like, I can't trust this. He gonna turn on me again. So anyway, yeah, we lost Adar in that moment. He ended up dying exactly the same way that he planned to have Sauron killed, which I don't know if you want to call that poetic or ironic, but it's sad and we see that he's like my children at the end, but it's like, sir, you lost the plot. Unfortunately, I can't feel bad for you because you were given a lot of warnings that this is what was gonna happen if you didn't pull it back, but your pride got in the way, your anger, your, your feud with Sauron. So anyways, he's out of the picture. And of course, by then Galadriel saw that Sauron was there. And I know I was yelling at her to run, but I know at that point it was definitely too soon or too look too soon, too late. Um, you know, Sauron would have definitely caught up with her, but they have their whole long song quite literally and dance. Um, <laughs> it was a very long dance the two of them did. And, you know, it's interesting because the writers said that one of the writers on the show said that Sauron loves Galadriel and that we would see it in this episode. I don't know that I consider it love. Again, like I said, I don't think a man doing what he's doing is capable of love anymore. But I do think that like Hela Brimbor, he had a respect for Galadriel, a deep respect for her and her conviction. And yes, as much as Galadriel loved to say they were different, they did resonate on the desire to be powerful. Not for like, Galadriel was not the person to, so she, she didn't want to be powerful at all costs. That's where her and Sauron differed. But she did want to be powerful and that's what he bonded with her over last season. So anyway, they have their whole little song and dance and they, you know, they say what they need to say. And unfortunately, because he goes to his bag of manipulation tricks and does things to appeal to her emotions, AKA turning into, um, turning into Celebrim Bor, turning into Hal Brown, who she was, let's face it, falling in love with, turning into her, like just getting her angry and upset, you know, cause he was losing the fight, quite frankly, um, Galadriel was starting to best him. So he went for the emotional attacks and it worked and Galadriel ended up fighting angry and she lost and he got his rings back and then he wanted her ring. He said, give me back, you know, give me your ring because I don't, I do believe someone was saying that they, those are the three rings that aren't tainted. And I do agree now that Sauron didn't get a chance to taint the first three rings. He probably wanted to, but he didn't have an opportunity. So that's why he wants them back because he doesn't want anything that can fight against what he's doing. So he wanted that from Galadriel and he wanted her to give it to him. It's very interesting. And it's, it's interesting because he could have just taken it, right? Like when he had a, the crown stabbed into her chest to the point where it's pretty much poking out the back. Galadriel had no capacity to fight him. Like he could have just reached down and ripped the ring off her finger. But he said, give me the ring, give it to me. So that shows that he still felt like Galadriel had a level of, I don't say power over him, but it showed that he cared enough. Like he really wanted her to surrender to him. So that's where I feel like the love comes in and that he really wanted her to be the one to, he really wanted her to see his vision. And especially in that last moment where she did take the ring off and she acted like she was gonna give it to him. And she said, you wanna heal the earth. You wanna heal Middle Earth. And you see him literally tear up because he's like, oh God, finally someone gets it and someone that I respect. 
And then of course she basically gave him deuces and jumped over the, the ledge. But yeah, I'd say that was the one moment that was kind of poignant between the two of them. Because as I said, he could have taken that ring at any point, but he really wanted her to be the one to submit willingly and give it to him. Just like he wanted Kella Brimbor to submit and tell him. And it just never happened. So yeah, that's what happened there. Galadriel, you know, being the boss B that she is. She took a fall from a crazy height, but I think the ring saved her because we know it has the ability to heal. I think that's what kept her from like, not like for just, that's what kept her surviving the fall. And then we see that later on that as much as Elrond hated, hates, hates, hates those rings, he ended up having to use it to save Galadriel's life. But I think if there's any reason to use an evil, an evil ring, that was it. But as I said, I think I can believe now that the, the, the elven rings at the very least are not evil. So yeah, that's where we were at. Uh, Galadriel is alive, barely. And the king made it. And Aaron dear, thank you. You heard me right in God's thank you. I take back almost all the slander I gave you last episode. Almost. But yeah, I'm so thankful that he survived. I love Aaron Deere's character and I just feel like there's more story for him to tell. So uh, I'm so thankful that he survived. I'm like, the fact that he was still moving, I felt was, I feel like if, if they were going to kill him off, they would have made it abundantly clear he was dead. But I didn't know for certain. So glad he survived and he's okay and he's there to live another day. And we see that all the elves at the moment are in some valley just kind of recouping and uh, the rings are helping to, I think they, they use the rings to like make the water and the trees and everything else so that it's something that they can live in for now. And we see that the king said that they've got the hard decision of what they need to do next. Do they do they fortify their what they have now to to um, prepare for Sauron's attacks or do they try to attack him now while his orc numbers are diminished? And he's just not sure what to do. So she, she they said, you know, they asked around the group asked Galadriel and Galadriel basically just said that, look, we just got to keep shining. Basically, she's like, this is darkness. Sauron is darkness. We have to fight back with light. It wasn't really an answer <laughs> in the strictest sense. But I think what she's basically saying is we got to do the best that we can. I think they need to do a bit of both. Like they need to fortify the cities that are left, but they also, if they can mount a decent offense, they got to try. But I think that they need to reinforce first because a lot of the other nations are nowhere, nowhere near ready to go up against an orc army at this point. Speaking of other places that are not ready, last was Numenor. We didn't spend a lot of time there, but effectively we see that um, the king, or the, anyways, the false king, once he realized that the sea trial didn't work and that there were people who felt like the queen is still the rightful ruler, he had to come up with a backup plan. We know that he touched the Palantir last episode and he foresaw, Sau or he saw Sauron. And so now he basically drafted up a thing basically saying that Queen was in league with Sauron and that's how she survived and manipulated the sea monster, which I'm like, ha, huh? Sauron is like halfway across the world. How the hell? But anyway, it doesn't much matter. He doesn't need much justification or sense to do what he's doing. So he basically said that everybody who follows the church of the elves and anyone who follows the queen is effectively a uh, treason or a person who's committing treason now. What do you call those? Traitor. There we go. <laughs> a treason, a traitor. And he's rounding them all up and either imprisoning them or probably executing some of them. And we see that Ellen Deal's useless daughter finally did something that was helpful and warned him before because they knew he was going to be executed. Let's be real. So she warned him and gave him enough time to get out of the city. And we see that he tried to bring, he tried to bring Muriel with him, with him but Muriel said, nah, my place is here. You need to go. And I knew she wasn't going to go because in his vision, he went alone. I think he forgot about the vision, but yeah, in his vision, he was riding out of the city by himself. So I, I really wish she'd gone with him because I really love them. Like, I think they were such a cute little ship and we don't have any cute, like, love stories in this show, guys. Like, not one love story. Everybody's just like, except for Disa and Durin. Let me take that back. There is one cute couple, but we don't, we still don't love and no one's got no love. But anyway, so Muriel sent him on his way and said, look, your, your future is out there. Go out there, make a name for yourself and, you know, help. At some point, you know, we're going to need some strongholds back in Middle-earth anyway. So you do you, you do you, and I'll stay here because this is where I belong. So, and I mean, the one thing I'll give her is that I don't think her uncle wants to kill her. Like he had the opportunity. I mean, he tried with the sea beast thing because he kind of thought whatever, but I don't think he would do it directly. That's the thing. I don't think he could look her in the eye and do it. He's not quite that crazy yet. And especially if she doesn't give him trouble, he won't do anything. So anyway... So that happened, and then the ships from Numenor ended up going to the 
colony and they're supposed to bring supplies for the winter, but we see that that, mm, that annoying king of, is he a prince now, I guess? Anyways, that the king's kid showed up and basically said, yeah, we're not giving you supplies anymore. We're making this into an outpost. Basically saying, we don't give a damn about y'all. We're gonna provide for us first and whatever scraps are left, we might give them to you. He sees that Isildur is still alive, which is not good news for him because he knows that Isildur is close to his dad. And when he finds out about his dad, he's not gonna be happy. But he's basically like, yeah, I'll take you back. But just so you know, there's a new world of things. You're, you know, the queen's no longer a queen. My dad's king and your dad is basically an, an enemy of the state. So yeah, poor Isildur is trying to just, you know, fathom all this while trying to bring his new whore bride back to, <laughs> I'm sorry, I should be nicer to her, but come on girl, you just gonna leave your man up and, me, up and leave your man who was captured for home, how long like that? Just like that? But, and, so, oh, he made me sick when he built a beautiful home and said he wants us to be happy forever. What is wrong with you? <laughs> if, I'm sorry, this is how you know some men are not bright because Imagine, imagine you want to marry a woman who just said that a man who survived torture and capture came back to you, stayed faithful to you, and is now trying to build you a house saying that he hopes your love lasts forever makes her sick? Huh? Isildur, bro, come on. Uh-uh, you, you can do better, bro. Uh-uh, that girl's for the streets. She's from the streets. Anyway, Isildur is headed back to Numenor because that is his home and his sister is there. So my guess is he thinks he's gonna meet up with his dad or at least try to protect his dad. But when he goes there and realizes his dad's gone, I don't know what's gonna happen, but we'll have to see. So that's where Numenor is at. Numenor is basically in civil war as well. We've got the, you know, the followers of the king versus the followers of the queen. And so once again, as I said in the episode, according to Sauron's plan, the world of men is in chaos. So that's kind of everything. I think I've covered all the bases, all the different, people that were talked about. We really did wrap up kind of all the different storylines we started this season. And I think they did that They did that wonderfully considering they did it in just a little over an hour. So yeah, again, great episode, great finale. I like this season a lot. Episode seven was my favorite, but I just think they're doing such a great job executing this story. I'm very, very grateful that we have more story to tell because it's so much fun to watch this show. I love the main cast and Aaron Deer survived. So that's all that matters. <laughs> Anyways, that's it guys. I know I talked quite a bit, but there was a lot to wrap up in this final episode. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you stayed to the end of this review, I appreciate that so much. I also appreciate you watching this season along with me. I hope it's been a fun journey. I hope that you'll stick around with me as well. I watch a lot of other stuff, a lot of other things in these veins. If there's a good fantasy show, I'm usually on it. So please do subscribe if you haven't already and continue this journey watching really fun shows with me. And if you already are subscribed, thank you so much for your patronage and for your viewership and for your support and all those wonderful things. And I hope to see you again soon in the next video. That's it.